I don't know about you, but personally, I'm really into architecture and interior design. I think that's amazing what you can do with even a tiny room with just the right choice of colors, light fixtures, enough storage for the clutter. Recently, it got me thinking, though, you know, you can have this perfect room concept, absolutely ideally planned, um, harmonic, and then you always have to deal with these things that you just never see in these pictures and on the house app and in country living, you know, things like radiators, and there's just never enough sockets, so you always have to deal with these omnipresent cables. Um, useful stuff, no doubt, uh, absolutely necessary, but quite frankly, quite ugly, and also really limited in their functionality. And I was wondering, isn't there a better way of doing these things? Heating houses, transmitting power, and I do believe that Technology has actually advanced from these things. Um, equally, in architecture, it's surprising how little we know about uh, buildings and structures once they've been standing for a while. For example, the state of our bridges, we have so little clue about, I always wonder if I really want to cross. <laughs> equally, this hall, beautiful. It's amazing. I was in awe when I first entered it yesterday. It's been standing for 130 years, plus minus. That's all we know, really. Is that good enough? Are you happy to sit here for another few hours? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, these things do still collapse spontaneously without prior warning. <laughs> Just a couple of years ago in London, uh, a theatre ceiling came down, and that was during a show. Not a TED talk. Nevertheless, people in the audience just like you. And I was thinking, isn't there a better way? Can't we get our buildings to communicate with us better? I mean, I've been wondering if the blinking lights up there are already trying to tell us something. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna step back maybe a little. <laughs> um, anyway. I'm a material scientist, so yes, I'm a material scientist with a passion for architecture and interior design. And so what am I even talking about this? I'm in the nano world. What do I know about construction and uh, buildings? But if you think about it, the connection is really close because no structure and no building, no product is better than the materials it's made of. And in the materials world, there is really one player that everyone is talking about, and that is graphene. Uh, in the news, they really like to call graphene the wonder material of the 21st century. Uh, and that is because the news really loves these type of things. <laughs> um, and also because graphene is a real prodigy, I uh, have to admit it, it has really everything uh, you could imagine. Combines properties, like the best properties of all other materials combined together, you can find in graphene. And um, so as such, as it's, it's a material that is really flexible and super lightweight, yet ultra strong and highly conductive, and that both electrically and thermally. So really, the scientists who uh, first um, sort of uh, isolated graphene and, and um, found uh, its properties were really amazed. They thought, wow, we have to share this with the world, and the world rewarded them by giving them the Nobel Prize. <laughs> In 2010, the Nobel Prize went into the field of graphene, and um, that is uh, be because it just uh, really combines these amazing properties. So what then is graphene? It's a single atom layer of carbon arranged in a honeycomb structure. Okay. <laughs> why do we care? And why is that special and why is it difficult to make? Well, for one, graphene is a two-dimensional material. 
that might not excite you right now because we are just so used to these seemingly two-dimensional things like uh, prints, graphs, photos. But really, I mean, intrinsically, really nothing is two-dimensional. Everything has three dimensions. And that's really what makes graphene extremely special and really difficult to make as well. Uh, it took almost 60 years from the first thought experiments to first holding the stuff in hands. Uh, and that's also really what gives that uh, material this extraordinary set and combination of properties. So uh, I always think it helps to bring them a little bit into context because it really shows their significance. So for example, graphene has been uh, described as 200 times stronger than its weight equivalent in steel and as more electrically and 30 times more thermally conductive than copper. All the while, the stuff is really lightweight and flexible and keeps all these properties even when you stretch it. So we, if we think about that, we all know flexible, lightweight things like tissue paper, maybe cling film. doesn't usually come to mind when it comes, about, it comes to competing with steel for reinforcement. So I really hope that you are with me that uh, graphene is a special uh, material and deserves a few minutes of your time. Uh, but then you might also sort of rightfully say, so what? There is a new material. It might be uh, extraordinary and, and, and astounding, uh, its properties. But what do I care if there is just, you know, possibilities and visions and nothing to hold in hands, nothing to use, really, nothing concrete. And in this case, you will be pleased to hear that even concrete is going to play a role in our applications in just a minute. Uh, but before I get there, I would like to just point out one fact that is very important whenever you want to develop applications for a new material, and graphene is no exception in this case. It is incredibly important to have it on a large scale to have it available so that when you demonstrate those amazing properties and applications, you can then actually make the stuff for everyone, for every household, for you and me. And this is what we do in Cambridge Under Systems, where I work when I'm not here, you know, giving fancy TED Talks. Uh, we make graphene on a very large scale and in this extremely exciting, sustainable process that converts greenhouse gases into graphene powder. And this powder can then be implemented into material systems that we've been all used to and working with forever. Things like coatings, solvents, polymers, and give them the properties that graphene brings, makes them multifunctional, gives them these additional benefits. And as you can imagine, and might even have heard already, if you think about a set of properties as wide as that of graphene, if we talk about the possible applications for the stuff, we'll be here forever, unless we kind of restrict ourselves. And so I thought I'd select uh, five applications that are really exciting because they're coming our way, they're very real, very much happening, and uh, moreover, are going to affect us all. And I'd like to start with the one that I think is still sort of furthest in the future and work my way uh, closer to present times and what's already on the market. And also because there was sort of this cry for concrete applications, I thought I'd start with graphene in concrete, which is a really amazing opportunity for structural monitoring. You can create a mix of graphene uh, in concrete, that thereby creating an electrically conductive mix, and you can send a signal through the entire structure. And if there are cracks or any damages, then you can pick that up from a signal, rather than from the catastrophe that the ceiling came down. I think that's an amazing uh, opportunity there. Then earlier I was mentioning that omnipresent cables are sort of a real nuisance in <laughs> interior design, and also that graphene is really very highly electrically conductive. So we uh, can create and formulate a paint, very much like what you have uh, and put on the walls in your homes. And every time you then have to 
connect up things, for example, hypothetically, a set of speakers in your living room, you just get out the paintbrush uh, rather than having to literally wire things up. And I guess it goes without saying that the implications for industrial applications due to the uh, weight and space savings are massive as well. And then I have two applications that are both based on the fact that graphene is a very good chemical barrier. So I was mentioning that it is a single atom layer of carbon. Nevertheless, it is actually impermeable for literally anything, including uh, moisture and air. And so it is, for example, possible to formulate coatings that prevent corrosion. So when you hear corrosion, please don't think about, or do, but not only, the bike chain that rusts and you have to spray it with WD-40, because at uh, over two trillion US dollars a year, the cost of corrosion worldwide is a massive factor, and that not just for the maritime industry. It is, in fact, the main reason why bridges uh, still collapse kind of spontaneously. So you can see uh, the implications for such an application there. And similarly, uh, building on the same property, so this chemical barrier, it is also possible to formulate flame retardant coatings. That is by preventing oxygen to reach the flame and the fire, and therefore preventing the flame from spreading. So you can see this is an, like, a really great opportunity because graphene enables or doesn't mean that we have to change the way we do fabrication or that we have to change the material we make things out of. It's just sort of an extra coating and you give all these extra functionalities without adding any weight or real processing steps. And uh, lastly, I would like to uh, mention an application that I find extremely cool. Uh, it um, has its applications, again, in sort of interior design as well as industry, and it is already on the market. So it's been possible for us to formulate a paint that is a heater. <laughs> you can spray or uh, brush the paint on literally any surface and connect it to a low voltage power supply. This is extremely good and efficient at heating. So in this particular case, you could imagine that um, the beetles crossing Abbey Road are actually what heats the room. Um, so, but then obviously industrially, um, it's, it's a great thing because at the moment with current technologies, it is very difficult to heat surfaces that are not straight and flat. And this is something that we can enable with, um, with this uh, heater as well. So you've seen that there is really a vast field of possible applications for graphene and that this is a very exciting thing. And I'm sure you've all heard about the material before and were probably thinking that I was going to talk about uh, flexible screens, essentially covering every pillar in the street and uh, creating these indestructible mobile phones or the opportunity of mimicking uh, the, the newspapers that they have in Harry Potter uh, without the magic, but with graphene, so it's kind of the same. <laughs> um, but then I really wanted to discuss or say uh, things that will affect us all, even if you are not into these gadgets, these technology toys. There is an application for everyone, since you will still be living in houses and working in buildings, traveling in vehicles, uh, using machines, um, and all these areas will be affected by the stuff. And all the while, what I really love about graphene is that it doesn't expect of us to change the way we do fabrication and manufacturing, and we don't have to change the way we do lives and all adapt to something new two-dimensional, what is that? but it actually implements and makes progress and, and uh, application development easier and better and multifunctional and um, all the while not expects of us to, to really change the way we, we do life. And I think to top it all, with graphene it's possible to do just more with less. The abilities or its, its properties allow us to just, you know, ease the pressure for once uh, on our planet that comes from the overuse of materials and um, formulate things, make better progress and better products possible and all the while 
um, reduce the use of materials. And I just think that this really deserves uh, notice because uh, for once, this one occasion, we do not have to decide between fulfilling our desires and wants and wishes and saving the planet. But in this particular case, we can really do both. And this is really coming your way, so I'd like you to be prepared and make the most of it. So, thank you. <laughs>